In this demonstration, we will show an example application that illustrates the benefits for research and experimentation of SDN applications over Jeanne endophilia facilities. The objective of this demo is to run an open flow based multicast experiment on top of a Vertico's virtual network by showing the added value of the SDN paradigm when dealing with changes in the network topology. The experiment is performed on the Jeanne Ophelia Joint Research Facility using the Ophelia Control Framework and L2 links established with Jeanne nodes. The first dashboard is used to configure the Vertigo's virtual links. It depicts the physical topology composed of five open flow islands TUB, ETH, CreateNet, Jeanne, and I2CAT. The second dashboard depicts the user's view of the network. For demonstration purposes, also these nodes are represented grouped in islands. Although usually the controller is not aware of the details of the underlying physical topology. The virtual topology assigned to the user includes the so-called virtual links. That is, links which are logical aggregation of different physical links and nodes. For instance, the link connecting these two nodes, pointed by the cursor, in the virtual topology is a logical aggregation of three physical links and two nodes. Below you will find the list of the currently installed virtual links. For instance, the virtual link N9, in yellow, connects the two non-adjacent nodes, 07 and 02. This can be verified in the second dashboard with the user's view of the network, where the two nodes are directly connected. Now, we open six virtual terminals on virtual machines connected to the virtual topology. Three will be used to run multicast servers and three to run multicast clients. The servers are located in the OpenFlow islands of I2CAT, ETH and TUB, while the clients are located in CreateNet. Now, the first multicast server is started from I2CAT and the first client is started from CreateNet. The virtual topology controller detects that the client has joined multicast group one identified by address 224.111, port 1234. The, controlled, the controller sets up the multicast tree and the client starts receiving the video stream. The path of the video stream from the server in I2CAT to the client 06 in CreateNet can be displayed by checking the Group 1 checkbox. Here we start a second client for the same multicast group. The path on the dashboard now arrives also to node 08 in CreateNet. Now, we start another multicast server on group 2, identified by address 224.1.1.2, port 1234, from a virtual machine located in the TUB island. A client for the same group is then started from CreateNet. On the dashboard, we can see the path of the stream from TUB to CreateNet by checking the Group 2 checkbox. Now, we start a second multicast server for Group 1 from the ETH island.
The multicast server is connected to switch 02 in ETH, where the cursor is pointing. Here we can also see that the group 1 clients are still served by the server in I2CAT. Now we stop the server in I2CAT. As we can see, the two clients stop receiving the video stream. As soon as the multicast tree fails, a new pre-computed one from the server in ETH is installed in the involved switches, thus minimizing traffic disruptions. The new tree for group 1 is shown on the dashboard.